the thing that makes time travel possible is this bell housing. Welcome to episode four of the Budget Hot Rod Build. In the last episode, we got to a good stage with those sub rails, but in order to know exactly where I'm gonna build the cross braces for the sub rails, I need to mount the gearbox to the engine. So we're gonna get into that this episode. However, this gearbox is absolutely filthy. So we're gonna give that a good scrub and jet wash off first and then crack on. The gearbox is by no means immaculate, but at least now when I touch it, I don't get caked in horrible old grease and oil. If you saw episode one, you'll know that this gearbox, which I'm gonna use, is from a Volvo. It's the M47 gearbox, if I remember, which was in the rear wheel drive, obviously, Volvo 940, and I think maybe some other models. Obviously, it's a bit of a strange choice to some to use with a flathead engine, but these gearboxes are fairly common in this country, and obviously in Sweden and places in Europe. This is 100% new to me, fitting this kind of gearbox to the engine. I literally know nothing, but what I found was there is a, a guy in Sweden that does a kit to actually bolt this thing up to the flathead engine. The thing that makes time travel possible is this bell housing adapter. And if you look closely in it, you can see it is stamped Volvo and there's some quite nifty welding for this adapter all the way around. So let's just, to start with, offer this up to the flathead just make sure this is going to work. Here we are looking inside the car. Here's the adapter. And this is the flathead bell housing. Just by looking at these holes, there's a bolt hole and that looks like a locating hole. So, yeah, that seems to line up. The locating holes definitely line up anyway. So I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. So that is the first part of the kit. And I need to take off the existing bell housing and then this obviously just bolts on. I'm pretty confident that's going to bolt on. They're both Volvo parts and the holes should line up fine. And the second part of the kit relocates this gear stick from here right back where you'd find it in a Volvo to the, more like the position you'd have on a Model A gearbox. And it comes with this rather homemade adapter bracket. I have obviously no instructions with this kit at all. I've seen a couple of photos, but I'm really just trying to <laughs> suss out how this all works. As far as I can tell, this bracket is gonna sit on top of the gearbox there. This is included in the kit. By the look of it, this end attaches to the gear stick and the ball end attaches in there. lucky I had my oil catch tray there. I didn't really know what to expect and I will have to order a new one of these gaskets because you can see it's torn there. However, I'm going to just 
bolt up the new bell housing adapter just so we can crack on. Although this kit or this bracket particularly looks a bit DIY, you can see the grinds are pretty, pretty brutal and the welding is quite clever. If you notice one of the legs hasn't got the kind of space off part. So there is literally only one way it can go. It just fits somehow perfectly that way. And that bit actually clears this switch, which I'm guessing is out of the reverse gear switch. So I might just fit that quickly. It looks like an easy thing to do. And then I'll tackle taking this old bracket thing apart because I'm not sure how that fixes in there and I'm not sure how to get that lever off either. So the kit isn't perfect because one thing is now these bolts that came out obviously aren't long enough with these standoff bits. I haven't got any probably exactly right length bolts but I've just got a few temporary ones I can chuck in for now just to hold it in place. Now this is another little issue with the kit. These quite long bolts uh, in the back of the gearbox here they bottom out without these bits because this existing sort of bracketry thing spaced these bolts out. So what I'm gonna have to do, like I've done on this first one, is just pull out the old, if I can get it out one-handed, and actually pop them on. Eventually I'm just gonna probably buy the right length of bolts and we can do away with that. But for now, just to progress this thing, if anyone is gonna attempt using one of these gearboxes, I didn't, have any clue how, how this all goes together but this gear stick here is actually there's a, a grub screw thing at the bottom I'm hoping once I take that out this whole piece will slip off here definitely need to reuse this part but it's really difficult to see because it was a bit rusty I'm just gonna take this off and then this pin pulls out here so I'm just gonna swap these bushes over I'm just going to mock this all up loosely because I'll put some paint on this once I know it all works together. This couple of part was a complete mystery to me as well, but it's got this kind of cover bit which goes over here and then it just looks to me like there's pins because there's a pin that way and a pin that way. So I think I can just push out these pins now and then this connecting lever should pop out. And then finally, I'm gonna take off this part from the old kind of supporting framework. Hopefully it's just a couple of nuts. And then I am gonna put this thing back together a bit quick before I forget how it all goes. I didn't wanna get into this gearbox quite as much as I did, to be honest. I just wanted to take off the old Volvo bracketry, etc., to offer the, the gearbox into the car. But anyway, I was kind of paranoid about losing all the bits and pieces. So I, I've thrown this together as best I can for now, but it isn't perfect. Yeah, so a couple of small issues I've noticed with this setup and this kit is this new lever does foul on the actual gearbox. It needs some, a bit of clearance there. I'm guessing we can just grind off whatever this is off the casing and the other thing is it does rub actually on the new bracket there. If you can see, it, when I turn the um, lever left and right, you can actually just see it fouls on there. So needs a bit of clearance in there as well. I'm not 100% sure I've put this together right. So it's not quite how it came off the old one, but it feels fairly, fairly tight in there. So we're gonna leave it like that for now. It's looking pretty cool though with the adapter plate. Taking the body off to get a bit more room. Put a gearbox roughly in a position it's gonna go. 
and just trying to get a vague idea of how I can get this to fit in. As I thought, this cross member is definitely gonna either go or be heavily adapted. But what I might do first is take this old clutch out because you do need to run a Volvo clutch with this gearbox conversion. And I think the flywheel in there needs to be adapted, drilled for that clutch. But this is gonna be in the way. So I'm gonna take this out. Then I can at least get these to meet up together. Just see me remove the clutch. I think I might backtrack slightly and just take this link mechanism off from the kit that I've just put on. I'm just gonna remove it for now. So then I can cut this cross member and I think I might have to come right on top here, cut a big chunk out and then bring the gearbox up. I might end up, like I say, cutting the whole cross member out to make this link work, because I think that will interfere with the rear of the cross member. But like I said, I don't want to really start reinforcing all this frame for now. I just want to get this gearbox roughly in position. And I might even end up leaving some of this cross member, but then reinforcing it. Just raise this engine to a bit more like the position it will be in. That will take into account biscuit height. It's not exactly right, but it gets it a bit more in the ballpark. I'm still waiting for this fan, so I'm not sure how far backwards or forwards, but I've been measuring this cross member to see what I need to chop out, and it's quite a lot. So I need to completely chop out this down through the front there, and then all the way back, and that'll allow then the gearbox to sit into that space but because i'm chopping out so much of this there's not going to be a lot left i've just added these couple of braces on the frame i don't think it will go anywhere i think this will still be enough but if i do start chopping down into there these braces will just stop the frame pulling out or in or twisting even sunday monday happy days tuesday wednesday happy days thursday friday happy days and we can There's the gear box bolted up now. Luckily I've got a box full of flathead bolts because they're obviously the old Imperial ones. It's the right mixture now because I've got the metric ones for all the Volvo stuff and the old Imperial ones for a flathead. It looks like I've cut out too much from this cross member but it gives me a little bit of play if this engine does need to come back a bit. So let me just let this back of the engine down. The gearbox is down as low as it will go now. So it's just about touching the old cross member there. I think these flatheads run best when they are level. I think I read somewhere. And when we look at the pitch of it, we've got about one degree pitch. The angle of this needs to come down. Well, at the moment, it's two degrees out now, plus another three. The engine is at about a one degree slope. Hold on. Mind. So that's six degrees that frame has to move. The frame is at about three degrees the wrong way. It's been a long day. day, day, day. So we're two up and I'm looking at probably a three degrees right downwards, which means the engine will need to move five degrees down. You just get your one ready. That going up six, that will just need to move five degrees the opposite way. The uh, gearbox there needs to go down. It's got to be minus three. I can't think now. We need to cut more out of that cross member, is what I'm trying to say. I've just chopped down into this old cross member a little bit further and that's let the gearbox sit down and just checking the angle I know this is really confusing we've got maybe six degrees the wrong way and we know the frame is about three degrees that way so when the frame rakes the correct way about three degrees that engine and gearbox will be about right and I have just thrown the gear lever and the link from the kit back on, just to get an idea. I think it will mean we're gonna have a fair size transmission tunnel. 
and you can see there the space for the pedals is quite small that is partly why I've decided not to finish this cross member or cut it all out because somehow I'm gonna need to design in there their support for the pedals. That's it for this episode of Cobweb Garage. I'm really pleased to have mounted this Volvo gearbox up to this old flathead engine. Glad that it works, at least, you know, bolts together okay. There's obviously quite a lot more to do. I haven't fitted the clutch and I also need to make some kind of transmission mount or cross member. And I need to give that some thought because I want it to be removable so I can take the gearbox out if I need to. Maybe it's up on the ramp and I need to pull it down from above. And I didn't reinforce this old cross member anymore because I need to give some thought to where the pedals are going to go as well because that might just all tie in together. There's a massive elephant in the room. I keep mentioning it every time I sort of mount the engine and talk about angles etc and that is the rear suspension. I need to get the rear suspension at the right height, determine the rake of the, the chassis and you know the ride height etc because that affects how I mount the engine and gearbox, set my pinion angle and pretty much everything. So I think that will be the next job is the rear suspension. I haven't been putting it off as much as I feel maybe slightly intimidated by that rear suspension because there's some sort of heavy welding to be done with the brackets which hold the spring and I've never done anything like that before I've never done anything like any of this before but I can't put it off any longer I need to get on with that I've got some wishbones as well to go on so I need to do the same thing as I did with the front and weld in the bungs but that will be for another episode thank you for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram we have merchandise t-shirts which we ship all around the world and We'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Cheers.